Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you can't tell, I'm surrounded by very large, precarious stacks of books. I did some serious spring cleaning in my library. I tend to go through every couple months and just start purging books from my library just because too much pressure, not enough shelf space, not enough desire to read older titles that I've maybe wanted to read at some point in time. There's a lot of reasons why I pull books. Primarily it's for space. Y'all know that I get a lot of books every single month. Uh, and I don't have anywhere to put them. Like, I know I've shown off my, like, floor-to-ceiling bookshelves, but in the grand scheme of things, I am constantly out of room. Like, it's just, it's a problem. So, I go through every couple months and pull a lot. This time, I was ruthless. Like, I just, I was pulling books left and right, and part of this is because I'm just not in the mood to read a lot of this stuff right now, and I want it to go to a home that people will actually want to love and appreciate these titles. I'm not really putting disclaimers in this video just because I don't feel the need to do that. It's not a personal attack against any of you guys if any of these books are your favorite books. Some of them have been my favorite books, but just need a new home. So. Uh, I have no order in which I'm going through these. I would probably guess I have around like 80-ish books here to get rid of. I haven't counted. I just, they need to go. I'm out of room. So let's, let's just get into it. Um, let's start here. Um, I am unhauling Furthermore by Tahera Mafi. I just hit myself in the face. We're off to a good start. This is gonna be a gem of a video, let me tell you. Um, this is her middle grade book. I've heard good stuff about it. I just got this because I found it at Ollie's for $1.99 and it's a stunning cover. Do I read middle grade though? Not really. And I do like her writing, but I just, I do, it sat on my shelf for a long time. I'm never gonna grab it. It's not anything I look at and I get excited about. So this one is gonna go to a new home. I've got Mosquito Land by David Arnold. This was one of my favorite books of whatever year it came out, 2015, I wanna say, 2016, somewhere around there. It was so unique and it had such a good voice. I immediately turned him into an autobi author and I was not impressed by his second book. And looking back, I don't remember much from this. I remember some things, but I don't remember it being vital enough to want to keep in my collection. So it's gonna go. I have a When We Wake by Karen Healy. I guarantee this was an impulse purchase off of Book Outlet. It sounded cool, but it's also the first book in a duology or series. I have very little desire to read this, let alone start a new series of a book that I'm not excited about. So this one's gonna go. I was excited about it at some point. Not anymore. I have One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This was actually really good. I just read this, but it's a YA thriller mystery. And once you know the like plot twist, you don't really need to read it again. So I generally don't keep um, mysteries or thrillers just for that reason. I don't really need to reread them once you know what happens. So th for that reason, this one's gonna go. I have Come November by Katrin Van Dam. Uh, I believe I got this in a book box and I read this. This was actually really good. I do highly recommend this. But again, this is one of those books that it's a contemporary that touched on important topics, but it's not one that I see myself revisiting in the future. It was a really cool story while I was reading it. But ultimately, it's taken up shell space of another cool story that I could experience in the future. I have the first three books of the other series by Anne Bishop. So what is the first one? Written in Blood, I have Vision of Silver. That's book three, I think. Um, and at Murder of Crows. I do really like this series, but I don't really see myself buying the hardcovers of these to continue on reading them. I'm pretty sure I'm going to listen to them because um, I found the audiobooks of these and I really like them. So I do plan on continuing on with this series, but not enough to like keep them on my shelf. I don't love the covers enough to keep them because it's got a face on it. Not a big fan of faces on the covers. So these are actually pretty rare to find to the hardcovers of these. So I might sell these and see what I can get from them. But they are gonna go because they're taking up this much space on my shelf. I also have The Crowns Game by Evelyn Sky. I'm pretty sure I unhauled this in my last unhaul actually, but I've just been holding on to it for a friend who wants it, who hasn't come out to visit since then. Hindsight, I've already unhauled this, but it's The Crowns Game by Evelyn Sky. I have the Owl Crate edition of Mirage by Samaya Dowd. Um, I read an arc of this, so I'm keeping the arc because it, for some reason the arc was more special. I buddy read it with a bunch of people and that's like the physical tangible book that I want to keep of it. Um, and I don't love the cover change that they did of this. Some people do, so maybe I will sell it to somebody who really likes it. But for now, 
this copy is going to go. I have The Fandom by Anna Day. This was actually super fun. I really enjoyed this. This was a UK release of kind of my favorite type of trope of like nerds going to a convention and getting sucked into the world of their fandom and it was really cool. Will I reread it again though? Probably not. So I am going to release it into the wild. I have the Owl Crate version of it, The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chachki. Th this I just pr am probably never gonna pick up. I didn't love her first series. I think her writing is beautiful, but it's not something that I look forward to reading, if that makes sense. Like, I respect her words on the page. Her prose is beautiful, but I'm not excited about it. So in this one, honestly, it's again, kind of historical fiction, kind of fantastical adventure -y. It's not my type of story. So I am gonna give this copy to somebody who will actually love and cherish this like beautiful version of it. So this one's gonna go. I've got A Map for Wrecked Girls by Jessica Taylor. I think I picked this up on like a Black Friday sale or something. It looked cool. It seemed like a really fast, fun read that I never picked up. Like, this totally seems like a story that I would actually really enjoy if I sat down and read it in one sitting. But here's the thing. I have a lot of those now, and this one is not at the top of the stack. So it's gonna go to a new home. I have a Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge uh, by Paul Kruger. I picked this up for last month's Dragons and Tea Book Club, and I never read it. I feel bad because I didn't participate in my friend's buddy read or, like, book club read for this but I just, I had a lot going on and it's one of those books I really want to read it with people and now that that opportunity has passed I don't really see myself reading it on my own so this one's just gonna go. I only picked it up on Book Outlet for like a dollar so it's not like a serious loss for me but it's gonna go. I have the Winner's Curse trilogy. Um, this was the March book that I read for my book club. Um, we all read the first one. I didn't love it and it was a very polarizing book. A lot of people actually really enjoyed it. I don't think this series holds up in this day and age. Like this probably was amazing back when it came out in like the young YA publishing days. I didn't care for it that much, which is a bummer because I do have the full trilogy. I've probably picked these up off Book Outlet for a while. My This one is signed, so I might just sell it and see what I can get for it, but I don't really plan on continuing on with it. For everybody who's watching who's in my book club, Y'all are more than welcome to. I put posts up so you guys can still discuss the rest of the trilogy, but I personally will not be taking part in that. This one kills me. I'm unhauling the Young Elite series by Marie Lu. This was one of my favorite series. When I first started my channel, this was like one of the first series that did like the anti-hero or like the villain origin stories. That's a fairly common thing now, but I feel like this was kind of like the OG series that got me into loving villain stories. And I love them. They were so good. They were so fun. But at this point, I don't see myself rereading them. Honestly, I'm kind of scared to reread them because I hold them in a really high esteem in my mind. So I'm terrified to go back and like see that they've aged or that they don't hold up. So uh, as much as it kills me, I think I am going to pass these on to somebody else who will get to appreciate them for the first time. So I love you guys but it's time to part ways. I'm also getting rid of the Shatter Me, well, the old original Shatter Me trilogy with the novellas, like the novella bind up thing. Um, I just read these. I love these. I'm gonna be honest. This is one of those series that for some reason, I think it still holds up. It's tropey, it's dramatic, but I kind of loved it. Like I just listened to them a couple months ago, um, but I've been listening to them. That's the thing. Like I haven't even bought the fourth book and as I'm filming this, the fifth book just released, like the actual fifth book in the series, not the novellas. Um, and those are in hardback and I contemplated buying them, but they won't match and I don't love it enough to like go back and rebuy books. So I'm sorry, Whitney from Whitney Novels, but these are gonna go. <laughs> I'd still appreciate them and I still can re-listen to them whenever I want, but the physical copies are gonna go. I have Ripple by Heather Smith Malak. This is an Ollie's buy that sounded cool. I think I auto bought it because it had something to do with like schizophrenia or something. I don't know. I've never picked it up. I have very little desire to pick it up. I haven't heard much about it as far as reviews go, so this one's gonna go. I have Akata Witch by Nendi Akorafor, I think is how you say it, who is a very beloved author and I want to get to her books soon, like sooner rather than later, but this one I don't think is the one for me. I bought it a long time ago. I feel like I would like it until I found out that it's a very young YA, like this is almost middle grade, like the main character I believe is 12. That's not really a perspective that I read from anymore. 
even if it's like an amazing breathtaking story that just happens to follow a young protagonist, I just never gravitated towards this. So this is another one of those books that I think I can just get an audiobook for free to listen to it if I want to experience it. But for now, the physical version is going to go. I have No Good Deed by Kara Connolly. This sounded awesome. I love the cover. It sounds like a really badass Robin Hood retelling. But guess what? Sherwood just came out and I want to read that one. I don't want to read this one. So it got replaced. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got some arcs that I need to start trading or seeing if I can find a new home for them because you can't really sell arcs. Um, I have my arc for Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. I have a finished copy of this now. And this is one of those books, it's not special enough to keep the arc that I read. I generally keep arcs that, of books that I like love or ones that I have sentimental attachment to just because it might have been like a milestone in my like booktube career. This is not one of those, so I will be trading this. Same thing with Dry by Neil Schusterman. Neil and Jared Schusterman, a father-son duo. I love this book. Um, I probably will end up getting a finished copy at some point, but not enough to keep the arc of it. It's not special enough. I'm sorry. Ooh, that sounded harsh. It's okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. This was a super fun ride of a book though, so I'm glad that I got to read this early. I'm actually going to get rid of My Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is like the Owl Crate version, so it's like the blue-orange versus the like green cover. Um, I loved this book. This was so fun. This was one of my first introductions to YA historical fiction that was actually really enjoyable and cute and laughable. Like, I just, I enjoyed my experience with this way more than I thought I would. But again, I don't see myself ever picking it up again enough to like keep an exclusive version of it. So I feel like I can give it to somebody who's like a diehard fan of this series and wants this version versus like the regular version, you know what I'm saying? So this one is gonna go. I have two poetry books. I have The Princess Saves Herself in this one and To Make Monsters Out of Girls by Amanda Lovelace. I really enjoyed my reading experience of both of these. I don't think it's groundbreaking poetry. I'm not the person to judge poetry though. Like I'm not a very big like poem collector, person, reader, audience. I'm not the target audience for this. I got a lot out of these when I read them, but I don't think I'm ever going to actually go back and reread them. So for that reason, these are gonna go. Okay, we're starting on this side. We're making progress. Um, I have the Alcrate version of Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. I, this is one of those YA fantasies amongst many YA fantasies that has come out that just, I'm just not drawn to. That's Plain and simple, that's all it is. Uh, it's There's just a lot on the market right now, and this isn't one that I was looking forward to, so this one is going to go to a new home. I have, what is this? Words on Bathroom Walls by Julie Walton. This one's actually hard to part with because I think this is actually a very important story to have on your shelf. It's a very healthy look into mental illness, but I personally don't have schizophrenia, so I can't speak to if it was a like accurate representation, and it's not one that I think I'm going to go back and revisit. So it's gonna go, but I'm, I'm having issues with parting with this one. We'll see how it goes. I've got Rosemarked by Livia Blackburn. I think I got this in a book box a really long time ago. I've never picked it up. It sounded cool, but it's, again, it's kind of like historical fiction fantasy, and it's not anything that I've ever gravitated towards. So even though it's got a cool cover, I'm gonna let it go. A Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. I believe this is a sci-fi retelling of Jane Eyre. I need to read Jane Eyre first before I can read books like this, but I did not hear that it was great. And it's sci-fi. Sci-fi is not a genre that I gravitate towards a lot, especially when I don't see great reviews. I'm only really gonna pick up sci-fi when I know it's a very well-loved sci-fi story that I can get down with, and this is not one of them. I've got Otherworld by Jason Siegel and Kirsten Miller. I actually really liked this. This falls in the vein of Ready Player One or Wild Card, where it's a video game-oriented story where, like, you go into the game. I love books like this, and I think this one was actually really, really good. But again, I don't think I'm ever going to reread it. In fact, I've already forgotten most of it to the point where I don't think I can even pick up the sequel and follow along. And again, I don't have enough desire to go back and reread it to continue. So this one's just going to take the pressure off by leaving. I have the two Nicola Yoon books, Everything, Everything, and The Sun is Also a Star. I read these. I loved them. I was one of the few people I actually really liked everything, everything. I liked the twist in it. I love these covers. They're some of my favorites. I didn't love The Sun is Also a Star, and I feel like I was just being a booktuber and keeping these on my shelves because these were really well talked about and well loved books on booktube, but I'm never gonna reread them and I don't love them, so I feel like a catharsis by like unhauling them and like removing my status as like a 
old school booktuber. Does that make sense? I don't know, but these, they're gonna go. It's fine. I'm actually unhauling Adam Silvera books. I know. Um, this is The History Is All You Left Me. This, was this his second one or his third one? I think this was his second. Um, I basically became obsessed with him with More Happy Than Not, and I think that's the only book that is going to, like, hold my love of his writing, because I've tried to start this so many times and I just don't like it. So I feel like I'm just gonna keep More Happy Than Not, keep that on my shelf as, like, a sentimental, loved book, and not force myself to read his other books, if that makes sense. I just, I don't have, like, the desire to read really heavy, emotional, draining books that I'm not gonna love. Does that make sense? Okay, so this one's gonna go. On a similar note, I'm also getting rid of a Becky Albertalli book. I generally keep these books together on my shelf because I know they're best friends in real life, um, but I'm getting rid of The Upside of Unrequited. I read this, I liked it, I didn't have a problem with it. I know it's very problematic for a lot of people, but again, it's nothing spectacular. It just kind of fit the YA contemporary mold, in my opinion, so I don't feel the need to keep it. I'm going to get rid of the first two books in the Summoner series by Taryn Matharu, so The Novice and The Inquisition. I bought these because they sound right up my alley. Like, I was told these are kind of Harry Potter meets Pokemon, and I was like, those are two things that I want together. And the idea of having, like, a little animal companion thing was super appealing to me, but I have literally never picked these up. I think I even have the audiobook of the first one, and I just, I've never turned it on. So, again, if I want to listen to these, I can, but I don't need to keep the physical books on my shelf. I am going to get rid of the duology that is of Metal and Wishes and of Dreams and Rust um, by Sarah Fine. This is, I believe, an Asian-inspired Phantom of the Opera retelling. I was basically super intrigued by that. Phantom is one of my favorite plays, musicals of all time. Like, I did it in high school, I've seen it on Broadway, so I was obsessed with anything that had to do with it, which is why I got these off Book Outlet, and I just never read them. Like, it never happened. So these, I'm just gonna take the pressure off and take them off my shelf. I'm also getting rid of Winter Song by S.J. Jones. I have tried to read this so many times. I'm pretty sure I've included this in so many readathon TBRs, and I just never want to read it. Like, I've put the effort in to, like, pick it up, and then I'm just like, I don't feel like it. Partially because I'm terrified, because it's messing with one of my favorite stories of all time, which is Labyrinth, and I know a lot of you guys have kind of, like, upped my confidence of this book, that it's very loosely based. Like, you can't go in expecting, like, a Labyrinth villain origin story. It's different from that, but either way, I just don't feel the need to, like, put myself through it, whether it's good or not, so I'm just gonna take it off the shelf. I have one of my copies of Beneath the Citadel by Destiny Soraya. I believe I received multiple copies of this in book boxes, so I don't need all of them, so this one's gonna go. Another two books that I'm taking off my shelf that is, like, removing my old-school booktuber status is The Wrath of the Dawn duology by Renee Adier. I loved these books. These are kind of, like, polarizing with if people actually liked them or if they just read them because of the hype. I love them. I thought her writing was so atmospheric and so, so good, and I adore these hardback versions. The covers, I think, are stunning, and how it has, like, what you can see peeking through all these holes is actually inside the book. I just adore these books physically and content-wise, but I don't ever see myself picking them up again. Maybe in the future to, like, see if, like, my original booktube days still hold up, but I just not, not anymore. And I haven't been impressed by the stuff she's come out with since, so it's not like an author that I feel the need to like keep their books, whether I like them or not. It's not one of those situations, so these are gonna go to a new home. I've got a copy of The Walled City by Ryan Grodden. This is another one of those authors that I feel like everybody talks about and reads, but I just never felt the need to pick this up. I want to at some point read something by Ryan Grodden. I think her work sounds really good and interesting, but I don't think it's this one. I don't think this is the one for me. I've got two horror books that I've never heard people talk about, but I picked them up at the dollar store, and now I know why they were at the dollar store. Um, The Well's End and The Dark Water by Seth Fishman. These, it sounds like a creepy horror YA story, but the fact that I've never heard of it, and when you look it up, the ratings are not great. I just, I've got other stuff to read. That's all I got. I have Rotters by Daniel Krauss. This is a book that I picked up a really long time ago. You know what? It's blurred by Guillermo del Toro. Maybe I'll keep this. It's an adult horror story that has to do with, like, zombies, and it just... Okay, maybe I'll keep this one. It talks about grave robbing. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep this one. I'm changing my mind. This one's going back on the shelf. This sounds awesome. Got a copy of A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher, which I received in my Apollycon uh, swag bag type of thing. I did read this. I've got problems with this book. 
so much so that I don't want a copy on my shelf. So this one is going to go to somebody who probably will actually really enjoy it. I'm going to Unhaul the Warrior Air by Cinda Williams Chima. I picked this up at a book sale for like 50 cents or something. Um, and this is like the first book of the first series of all of her books. Like there, she has so many books out and I don't think if I'm ever going to read anything by her, I don't think it's going to be this series. So I don't know why I need to keep the first one of a series that I'm probably never going to read, let alone probably never going to pick up any of her books. So this one is for sure going. I'm getting rid of my copy of Spindle by E.K. Johnson. I know I just hauled this because I met E.K. Johnson. She was amazing. Um, but the version of A Thousand Nights that I have is like the UK hardback, which is just like one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. And this one doesn't match it. I love this cover, but I don't want to have like the mismatched books. And I haven't even read this one to love it enough to keep it. So it's gonna go. I've got The Imposter Queen by Sarah Fine. Uh, this one, I've heard good stuff about it. I think I actually unhauled other stuff by this author now. I think she wrote The Phantom of the Opera duology. Um, this is, I feel like, from what I've heard, it's a very untalked about, well-loved fantasy story. Like, this is a very well-crafted YA fantasy. But it, again, it's just sat on my shelf forever, and I just don't ever see myself gravitating towards it. Same thing with the Frostblood series. I have Frostblood, and then I have Fireblood, like the UK version. I might keep this because my friend from Ireland gave it to me, so it has, like, sentimental value. Um, but I don't ever see myself continuing on with the series. I read the first one. It was mediocre at best. And I don't know if I really want to continue on with the series. So I think I'm going to definitely get rid of this one. I might just kind of keep this for sentimental value somewhere else. Not on my shelves though, because we ain't got room for that. I was digging deep in my shelves when I found these. I have the Jenna Fox trilogy by Mary E. Pearson. I forgot she even wrote these. She wrote the Kiss of Deception series and the Dance of Thieves books that just came out. This was like her old original YA series. This had something to do, I think, with like amnesia or something. But this was like such a well-loved OG YA series that I never picked up. I always wanted to. They were always really intriguing to me. But I literally just found them buried behind like three stacks of books. And I was like, oh, I clearly don't love these enough to even give them daylight. Why should I keep them? So I think I am going to unhaul these. These I think I could very easily get from the library if I do want to get them, but I don't, I don't feel the need to keep them anymore. Same thing with this. I have Jellica Road by Melina Marchetta. This is one of the most well-loved YA contemporaries, and I bought it because it's won awards. It's talked about for decades. Like, t tons of people have recommended this to me, and I have never picked it up. And I'm scared that it's not going to hold up to what my standards are now compared to what it was back in its prime. And I just, I feel like there's so many things that tackle harder issues nowadays that I am more intrigued by. So this one I think is going to finally leave my shelves. Got Everland by Wendy Spinal, Spinali, Spinal, Spinali. Um, this is a steampunk Peter Pan retelling, which I've had the hardest time getting rid of because that just sounds so good to me. And these covers are everything. But again, I have never wanted to pick it up to actually read it. I just look at it and I'm like, that's such a great concept. But the idea of actually sitting down and reading it, I'm just like, nah. And I believe this entire series is out and completed at this point, And I just, I don't have any desire to pick it up. So this one is going to go, even though it's so pretty. It's fine. It's fine. It's gonna go. I have the first two books in the, I don't know what the series is called, Riders, The Horseman of the Apocalypse series by Veronica Rossi. I tried reading her original series that she's famous for, the like Under the Never Sky, whatever that series is. Didn't really care for them. This one is her more recent release and let's be real, I bought them because there's horses on the cover. I, that's, it was such a materialistic buy, and I still honestly really dig these covers, but from what I've heard, these are terrible. Like, I have, all of the reviews are bad of these, so I'm just like, why should I keep books that I'm probably not going to enjoy, just because, you know, I could just take the dust jackets and keep those. No, I'm not going to do that. That's weird. But I strictly bought these because there's horses on the covers. That's, that's gonna go. And I believe the last book that I have for this is an extra copy of Grim Lovies by Megan Shepard. I got multiples of these in book boxes, so I don't need all of them. So this is an extra copy, which can go to somebody who will probably love and adore it. Also, I don't think this is my jam. I'm probably gonna end up unhauling another version of it at some point. I didn't hear great stuff about it. So this one is also going to leave my shelves. That was a lot of books. This is going to be a very long video to edit. Hopefully you guys stuck with me. A lot of you guys seem to like unhauls. So I figured I would film it. These were all going to leave my house anyway, so I might as well show you what I'm pulling. But basically, I'm very much in the mood for contemporary and new adult and romance right now. 
and a lot of these are kind of backlist fantasy titles that I just I know I'm never gonna pick up so it was very like cathartic to take them off my shelves and remove the pressure of having to read them because I own them so that is going to be it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed the catharsis that is purging my bookshelves with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to see what I replaced all of these books with because I have hauls of plenty on this channel and I'll see you guys in my next video.